hello again and welcome back. Here we are to continue learning Swift and working on our calculator. This seems to be a popular project. I've found a few of these on, on YouTube and I'm just throwing my hat in the ring on this one, I suppose. Um, so, so far, you know, we've got the calculator and I think it's looking pretty good. I, I like the way this reads because I can easily find the keys and I know exactly which, you know, what I'm looking at here. It's like easy to follow. Okay. There's a couple things that I'd like to change. So first of all, each of the keys here um, has a string that represents the value on the key. And we're going to repeat this string in a couple places. Like when we handle a key press, when we start adding the business logic, then um, you know we'll need to match it up to the key that was pressed, right? And we'll probably use the string to do it. Um, so a string is not a good choice here. So better would be to create an enum that represent all of the keys, right? Second, um, you know, I when I made the button function here, I called this the title on the button, which made sense. But I, I think actually I'm going to change that to key, right? And it might be easier to easier to follow, right? So let's let's do that. I'm going to open up the sidebar here, and I'm going to create a brand new Swift file. So I'll go to iOS. I just did actually I did. Let me repeat that, right? I did file new file, or or command N. And I'm going to choose a Swift file, and I'm building for iOS. So here's my new file. Let's call this calculator, um, calculator key. Okay, so we'll name it calculatorkey.swift, and we should add that to our project here. And what I want to make is an enum called calculator key. And we'll set the type to string. Oops, there we go, right? And um, let's put another curly bracket there. And then we'll give this a case. And we'll need a case to represent each of the buttons on the calculator. And so there's a lot of buttons, right? Let me go get the calculator app on my desktop here. So that's what the calculator looks like. So let's see here. What kind of keys do we need? Well, we need the um, we need the um, yeah. Actually, you know this this clear button. I know there's like a lot. The calculator is like tougher than it than it looks, right? So that says all clear. But notice when I when I click a button, it says clear, because pressing the clear button just clears the last entry. It doesn't clear the, what's in the memory, you know, because you really have like two numbers. Like if I took two plus seven, when I click clear, it clears the seven. And then if I add a five and hit equal, then it adds two and five to get seven, right? So we might need like two clear buttons. Let's um, do a clear and we'll set that equal to C. Um, we'll do case all clear and we'll set this equal to AC and then um, case uh, plus minus equals and I'm gonna I bet there's a symbol for this but I'm just gonna put the plus minus there and actually what's nice is if we put all these things in this enum if we ever need to change uh, you know, the string that represents the key, you know, we can do it kind of globally from the one location in this file. Okay, so there's our plus minus. Let's do case percent equals uh, percent case uh, divide. And I know there's a divide symbol somewhere in there and I can't find it. So I'm just going to use a slash for now. And again, like I said, um, we can easily change this in the future. Um, so uh, so this like the work that we put in here will be um, will be worth it, right? So we got multiply, we got minus we got minus plus. And 
uh, what else do we need? Let's do case of, now we got to do all the numbers. So let's do it. zero is a zero. Oops, I missed the O there. One is a one. The one drag of this, this is actually like a really great thing. The one drag is in this particular case, it would be really nice to be able to just see the value here. And that's not easy to do. Um, we might be able to use an emoji because you can actually use an emoji for the names here, but then that's, it's hard to type the emoji, you know? So, you know, maybe we're just gonna have to spell out everything, right? So almost done, six. Seven. Eight. And nine. Oh, and the dot. I guess we can put the dot past. Yeah, so let's do dot. Done. Okay, great. So how do we use our um, our new emoji? So what we're gonna, our new emoji, our new enum, right? Um, so what we'll do is we will uh, we'll just replace all of these with the value from the enum. The thing about it though is that we have to set it to the type. So down here when we're making a button, we've got a string as the type for the button, but what we'd like to do is replace this with a calculator button or a calculator key, right? So there's our calculator key and now the default type can be um, a zero. Right, and you'll notice, like, if I put the dot here, and I it'll code hint me for the type, right? Um, so that's working pretty good. I have some errors now, right? So all of these now need to be a calculator key to value from the enum, and this down here, it's saying like, hey, you know, uh, this is not a string, and text expects a string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change this to a this title right here is kind of bugging me because now it, we've named our enum calculator key. So I feel like it would be better if I put the key here. So I'm making a button. It's very specifically a calculator button that has to take a calculator key type. And this title now is going to be the key. And we're going to just get the raw value. So the enum right here, I've set the type to string. So that means that over here, when I get the raw value, I just get the string value assigned to that enum. So that's fixed. So now all of these need to be fixed. So I'm gonna change this to key. And then this key was the equal. And this key will be the dot. Right, and this key will be um, the zero. Right, and then this is really nice because there's a fixed number of values, and you know, you know, as a string, you could accidentally type the wrong value, right? Because you just put anything there. With the enum, you know, you'll notice here if I hit the plus sign, it just gives me the choices, right? There's no other choices than the ones on this list. So you know, I can just type, and it'll give me, you know, the enum that matches, right? Plus. Let's do key as. Uh, three key as oh wait, dot two key as uh, one oops key as minus maybe subtract would have been better I don't know you know, um, let's do key as six, key as five, let's 
see, so that's looking pretty good. I don't know why the code coloring isn't quite coming back there. Don't worry about it. Let's see, this is multiply. You know, and again, I use the X there, but I use the asterisks and the other one. So, you know, once we've got this enum in place to change the key, you know, I could just go in here and change that to an X if I wanted, right? So this will be this will be like kind of a advantage. Maybe we should have started here, but it just occurred to me that this would be a good idea. So let's do eight. Key seven, wait, seven, um, key divide, percent, key, I did this one, I call this one plus minus, right? And uh, key, and this will be our clear key. Now again, the clear key, I have a clear and an all clear. So I'm gonna try the all clear here. Wait, all clear, right? Um, and then, oh, oh great, all my color coding came back and I don't see any errors, so that's pretty awesome. Let's click resume here and see what it looks like. Thinking, showing me the progress bar here. Oh, there we go. Wait a minute. Oh, still thinking. Oh, there it comes. Oh, yeah, we got the AC plus minus, the asterisks. Great. Everything seems to be working, right? And if, let's say, like, we don't like the asterisks there, we can put the X. And then we can check in on this one. Have to resume again. For some reason, it didn't see that. It should catch that though. Sooner or later, it'll get caught up. Um, so let's assume that that's working because everything else is working right. So uh, let me make sure I saved this file. Maybe that was the problem. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. What if I let's click Run and see what happens here. Well, I'm not going to worry about that. I think that that's working just fine. So, so anyway, so that's pretty good. So now we've got our enum, right? So that's a, a, a next step to building our project. The next step is going to be to add some business logic, right? So currently, um, when we make a buzz a button right here, the button takes in in Swift UI it takes two um, parameters, right? It's got the action and it's got the label. So the label is a text object, so you can put some text in there and display it. And the action is what happens when you click the button, right? So, um, you know, for us, for the action, we could say, you know, um, you know, do something here. I'll just put a comment in there, right? So this is where something would happen. And in the canvas right here, when we're in this mode, it's hard to tell, but we're in just kind of a, the drawing mode. And that's when you see the boxes, like if you select something, right? You see this little blue outline. When you click the play button here, it kind of runs the code. It's not really like it's running the, the app like it would run on the phone, but it's simulating the app like it would run on, like as if it would, would be running on the phone. It's a little different, but it's close, right? And um, when it's running here, it will recognize clicks, right? So you can you should be able to click on these things and things should happen. Um, right now, I don't have any actions here. So what we want to do is we want to handle these actions right now, okay? So that's going to be our next step. Let's cover that in the next video. Um, because there's going to be a few steps that we need to go through. And, uh, you know, just to keep in mind here, the content view is the the user interface. So this is generating the user interface, but the business logic that runs the calculator or calculates the numbers and handles taps on these um, buttons right here, that's going to be somewhere else where we're going to put that in another file and you know that file will be the business logic and we'll have to connect the two together. Okay. So anyway, thanks for watching.